so this replay they said they are gold and the opponents are plant diamond. So Muko is our person of focus. Greetings, friend. Thanks, man. Prepare yourselves for battle, heroes. All right. First of all, the rotation. Uh, in this draft, I would say you want to run Ragnaros top. Tassadar is a valid solo laner as well. Mm. But I don't think you want to put Ragnaros against Gul'dan, Ariel, and Arthas in, in the rotation. Actually, their solo should be Arthas. It's going to be Tyrael, but I feel like it should be Five. Arthas, maybe. Three. Tyrael's fine, too. For the great content. Arthas is a very common solo laner, but he probably adds a little bit more to the four-man. And he doesn't want to use his mana too fast, Tyrael, so he just goes to a very gentle solo lane. If he's in the four-man, he's going to end up using all his mana super fast. And he has no threat on, Tyr on, uh, on Tuvala. So Tyrael as a solo laner makes, makes the most sense. Just gonna reduce the volume a little bit. Oh, oh, that's why it's so loud. There we go. Let the battle begin. Yeah, so their rotation makes sense. And then you don't know who's gonna be the solo, but it's okay to go Ragnaros solo. Because uh, Brightwing, Tas, Vala can be very aggressive together. So it, the funny thing is right here, Vala is your front line and Diablo is your back line when you play it. Uh, Diablo is looking for angles for stuns, and Vala should play very aggressively every time she has Tassadar shield. Greetings, so, in terms friend. of shot calling, Kikotar should stream. constantly let you know when his shield is available, and that's where you're more aggressive. Hungering arrow usage should be very limited to save mana, mostly you focus on clearing the wave and getting as many auto attacks in on the front line as possible. Uh, another thing to consider is that because they have Gul'dan Ariel, there's a few things at stake here. First of all, they're going to be stacking the quest for Gul'dan. And secondly, the more people take damage from Gul'dan, the more free healing they get. So grouping up for a 4v4 is actually... What was that? It's actually not very useful. Unless you're getting kills. Because they have no sustain... What is happening? It's moving my... Oh, I had Gul'dan selected. That was weird. Uh, yeah, there's very little to be gained here. Unless you have superior poke. So, actually, the way that this lane should be played... Is... Continually Psystorm and Arcane Flare them. And Multishot. But do very little else. Because... Every time you auto-attack with any of these war uh, heroes... And they get Gul'dan spells on you. They will end up healing for free. So if you can auto attack safely as Vala, that's fine. Diablo shouldn't do much though. Also, I would like you to consider not doing a 4 versus 4 in the lane. Since you are playing competitively... It is much better to keep your Diablo um, in the smoke screen and to just either gank top as Diablo or to just wait until Oppo gets over aggressive. Consider this. If you win the four man so hard that you can start doing siege damage, that will have been a bonus. But if all you're doing is trading, you're literally giving them free quests. What happens when you say, go ahead and push the four man against us? We're not going to do anything. They will clear wave and then what? They will wait till next wave, clear your wave, go for your towers. That's where you can get them. That's the only place where you have kill power on them. They actually rotated and they got that on you. And now you're playing reactively. So you always need to ask yourself, like in Hero League it's different. Whatever you see on my stream, whatever. You always need to ask yourself, is it in our favor to 4v4 neutrally and just keep poking at each other, poking, poking, or is it not in our favor? Mm, I, I'm starting to get a very random feeling at the moment. Uh, 
not really sure what's going on anymore. Ariel solo chasing Taz. Uh, okay. So you guys are defending? Oh, nice push into a stun. Okay, that's a kill. Pause. We're not always going to have a lot of time to think, right? But in this particular case, it is most educational, I think, to pause and see what we should do. Okay, so your immortal is almost dead. But you see two of them are deep, uh, deep in their, uh, too deep in their cups. They're almost dead. Ariel has no energy. Interior has no mana. You're level 3.6 against 3.8. Tasted are soaking. So soon things are going to get worse for you. They will get level 4. They are closer to clearing the immortal. You have the most comfortable position in the game that you have had all game so far. And you're pretty healthy on mana and so on. So I would say you need to use the next 20 seconds to do as much damage on their immortal as they can. The likelihood that these two guys will completely hearthstone is very high. Tyrion and Ariel together do not do a lot of damage on this. But just in case they stay, one person can stay here. And I would say Brightwing can stay. For a little bit. Just Arcane Flare them, auto attack or whatever. Or you can keep Diablo here. Maybe Diablo stays. That's the most logical because Brightwing needs to heal these. Uh, alternatively, you can try to chase and get kills, but I just want to warn you that if you spend more than 5 seconds chasing, you will end up losing the first trade on the 50%. Yeah, because Grey Man is going to come back, they're going to have full life again. You will s spend a little bit of health and mana to chase them. If you can get a kill in 5 seconds, do it. If not, leave Diablo here and go for the thing. He finished the wave and then you all gang up on the Immortal. Indecision hesitation. Waste of time. They were so low they have to go back, right? We discussed this. It's a waste of time too. I appreciate you got level 4, but you would have got that anyway. Now they're full life and mana again. They take defensive positions. Everyone ends up clearing. And you do get a 5 versus 4 fight on your Immortal, which is nice. But I would say you could have been in a better position already. Nice stun on Gul'dan. He's gonna die. And you can probably get one more. Okay, again, same situation. You have double support. Ariel has no energy. Tyrael has no mana. Arthas has no life. Greyman can't do things by himself. You're pretty healthy. And again, you have that double support. So in this case, again, take position in the bush as Diablo. The rest of the four of you start rotating down. Attack the immortal. If they make a move, move over. And two seconds before you get there, Diablo engage, stun someone. You start focusing them, they die. Ultimately, the only thing that a chase will achieve you, even if you kill someone, is that Gul'dan comes back. Still the same number of bodies on the map. So chase doesn't do anything, nor does uh, the defense. So finally, you go, you make the correct move to attack. Though I would have liked to see Diablo stay there, as his extra damage is minimal, and you need the info. But finally you get the Immortal, you win the first 50% by a little margin, and that's that. Now... Again, options. You can wave clear, top or bot. But you're already level 4 versus 4. Plus, trickle XP will give you 5, which will really give you a little bit of extra damage. Can't wait for you to play WC3 again. This Bye. Saturday. Bootless. Thank you very much, man. Uh, also, you can go tap. But I would say tapping will get you here too late. Finally, you can send someone to defend. But that would be a bad idea, I think. So, just 5-man trade, win or lose. And from the looks of it, you will lose. Because they have grey main. But it depends. Okay. You guys very nearly lost it because of the stunts and stuff. But you all stayed, which is the correct choice. 
You got the uh, Hearthstone Vala, which is good. Uh, the Double Globe should have been collected by more people, because it helps with the mana gain. And you're not sending anyone bottom, which is bad. Tassadar or someone should be bot. You never want a five-man push with the Immortal. Ah, finally uh, Ragnaros goes, right? You never want a five-man push with the Immortal until, unless you have Sylvanas. Or sometimes when you have Illidan. Because Illidan can also spiral out of control. With Sylvanas, you lock down their towers, you get a lot more value. Ah... Uh, that's a micro thing, right? Keep him in the stun would be nice. Still, you get a lot of auto attacks in on Arthas. Now, I think... I don't know why I can't see your skill overview. I can't see your cooldown. I think you could have killed him. If you use Vault. I, I appreciate you're using Vault uh, as a potential escape. You're saving it. I think Arthas could have died with some Hungering Arrow action. Okay, you're almost to level 7, and it's a neutral situation, 4v4, and 1v1. So, it is correct to scout for the Impalers. It is incorrect to start it, because you're closer to a next advantage. You want to make use of that. And Diablo should be the scout, not Vala. Um, generally, for a warrior in competitive play, you show as little in lane as possible. So that you represent being everywhere at the same time. So Diablo should be here, here, never actually being in the lane. In Hero League it's different because you just want to add your clout to do more wave clear and so on. But uh, standing there is much better. And here or there you can... Because if Diablo just leaves the lane, mounts up, walks here, here or here. Tyrael must play afraid. The four man must play afraid. And if they don't, you punish. Now, level 7 is reach chain. Level 7 is reach. Uh, it took a bit too much damage. I, I think he had E available. So now you can't fight, which is a pity, because you had one wave window to fight. They take the Impaders, even though they were in 7, which is a crime. You guys shouldn't have let that happen. But... Again, like, unless they are going to kill your towers, just leave. Just don't be here. I, I give you three options. You stand as four people, you mount up, and you keep making circles till the next wave. You fight. Next wave comes, you fight again. And, and so on. This uh, is from Heroes Lounge, guys. Uh, diamond... Uh, enemy team has plat diamond and the red team has uh, gold plat. So option one, stay here, keep rotating, hey, wait for man. waves. Uh, the next option is Diablo in the bush here, someone in the bush here or whatever, and two behind the gate. Or all four behind the gate. Or all four here, just waiting. If they get overconfident, they attack tower. Diablo comes around the corner, bang, shadow charge, focus fire. Everyone hits their stuff. Towers are shooting, you clear the wave with your multi-shot while hitting the heroes, you kill a hero. And the third option is one person mounted behind the gate, for example Tassadar, and the three of you go to clear the camp. The worst thing that can happen if you leave one here is that they do indeed straight push to the tower. And you can always make a change in your decision and come back here and attack them. Of course they do have impalers. So that would have been more a situation. That would have been more a situation for uh, earlier on. So now you guys do that. Again, ideally this would have never happened that they get the Impaler because you guys did have level seven first. So that shouldn't have happened. Uh, in this particular case, although you guys went to get the Bruiser, just look the fact that you left with two, and they stayed with four, and they actually pushed, and you didn't turn and punish, is bad. Their push, which I call a vanilla push with uh, with a very small amount of support, one wave and three impalers, their push got the entire gate. Two towers, full HP, and a gate. Your bruiser needs to get equal or greater value than that. But you already got their gate. So your bruiser needs to end up getting the fort in order for this to have been worth it. 
And let's say they get their bruiser. That needs to be minus off as well. Because they're not giving anything up for bruiser. So during this time, when you go to the lane, if you do, and you see them missing, you would need to also attack fort because you know they're doing their bruiser. Everyone is leaving top? No! Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. you want to damage that. Yeah, that's fine. This is a good move. Okay, I like this. So you're getting value out of their late bruiser camp by immediately attacking, which is really nice. It is time for a change in strategy. And now your bruiser's pushing. Okay, let's talk about options. Uh, vision. You just traded. They just traded. Uh, oh, it's camera lock for some reason. Yeah, they just did uh, yours. You know that. You just did your uh, yours. And you have a bruiser camp pushing, and they have a bruiser camp pushing. So you got a few options. You can all rotate down to clear the bruiser. You can ignore the bruiser and wait till they show, and then engage on them. Or you can just randomly fight them here and fight or something. Because you don't know where the next Immortal is going yet. Mm, so if you go bottom S5, probably Brightwing shouldn't be in front. It should be Diablo. That means the warrior needs to be in a state of mind where he mounts up first and then goes. If you do that and you walk like this and they walk like this, they have the advantage because they go through the brush. So it would probably be better if you take a look here. And then if they're all here, just don't go. Because if they are all here, and you're all here, they have an advantageous position whether they attack you like this or like this. This, you are in a choke. This, they have the vision advantage. Furthermore, if they are all here, you don't need to fight. Yeah, Hanamura are going away. Furthermore, because uh, you see them all here, you wouldn't need to fight because your bruiser is going to get value. Now, if you suddenly see someone pop up top, like they sent one defender, and you see four of them here, flip the switch and go in. If you don't see them coming here, then clear this fast with Ragnaros and the others on the Immortal. All right, let's play and see what happens. You see Arthas, that represents more, so you guys give space. Finally, a skill shot is used, should be immediate. You see two, you see no one top. And the Immortal goes to a defensive position. So at this point, the best thing would still be put an initial defensive position with all five of you. If they don't immediately commit, send a few people bot to clear. Yeah. And now, I would say, you can even use some vision, like for example Tassadar Oracle, and push with multiple people on bottom. Sending one person and putting four to defend is a inefficient play. It would be more efficient to use vision to judge the distance that they are away and wait till they clear this. And they're gonna clear this. And because they're gonna clear this, kill their entire gate. And then if they make a move on your immortal, fine. Come and defend it. You will have good position and you'll have the defensive stuns of the immortal. But what I don't want to see is that four of you attack their immortal, giving them the potential 5v4 on you while having defensive stuns, or allowing them to clear this giant wave for free. Greymane shows up. You guys attack, but he can come back easily. That's the problem. So it would have been a far better play to just take down their gate. You guys end up doing the infinity poke with them. Greyman clears up for free. He's hurt. He's not in fighting shape. Ragnaros clears very slowly. You finally come down there, but only to do your due diligence of clearing. And then you give up the wave of XP. Nice blast wave focus on Gul'dan. You guys get into a fight. It's a good position. You will get more kills. Stereo dies. No, Tyrael doesn't die. Tassadar needs to seriously go easy on the dimensional shift usage. Get some hungry arrow value. You make use of the death on their side to get uh, damage on the Immortal, which is really nice. And you guys get the entire thing. So this is credited to the blast wave of Ragnaros and uh, Diablo 
engage. Now, talk about this. In this case, leaving the Immortal at 1 HP would have been the better play. Don't finish it yet. You put Tassadar Brightwing here and finish with a Sidestorm or Arcane Flare. Why? You're level 9.5 versus 9.3. There's a wave coming on your fort. For free, you can soak this. And there's a wave down there. Ragnaros has very little mana. And Tassadar is below half mana. D Diablo is at half life. It will help for him to get Devil's Due, but he doesn't have it. So you put it on 1 HP. Finish it anytime you see them starting to significantly damage your Immortal. And first get your lanes under control. What that will give you is level 10 with your Immortal push. Now instead, you lose XP, level 10 is delayed, your Immortal will take unnecessary damage and the value of it will be reduced. And they are actually going to outlevel you because they sent someone top and you didn't. Get your level 10. Uh, Archon gets used immediately. Ideally, Archon is a follow-up to Apocalypse Engage. You also know Tyrael's top, and your Immortals are getting poked. They have very little Immortal damage with Gul'dan, Ariel, and Arthas. And also, your Immortals tanking the entire defenses. You have one hero lead, and they're not 10 yet. You could have been 10 earlier if you did what I said, but actually, I want to say in hindsight, my advice was mediocre. You see, level 10 was still reached very early because of the wave. You guys went as 5, so... Ignoring my earlier 1 HP advice, in this situation still, immediately, Apocalypse, Q, E, focus on 1. They have no Crystal Aegis, they have no Sanctification. You need to make value out of this Immortal. Ariel is extremely out of position. Anyone can kill her right now. So for a Smash, Apocalypse, Reign of Vengeance, if she gets away, that's crazy. Oh my god. She walked forward and did the Detainment Strike and no one punished. He has uh, from the shadows. He can hit her easily. Now they're level 10, so the value is much reduced. They get a horrify because they made the first move instead of you making a first move. Everyone gets hurt. Emerald Wind disengaged. Minimal value. Always make the first move. Engage quickly and confidently as the tank. Diablo already has full souls, and you had your ults, and they didn't. Now you all group up here to defend together, but I can't stress enough how important it is to always have a solo laner. You continually lose lots of XP from that uh, solo lane. And... Yeah. It's bad. Okay, everyone gets the camps, you defend at your forts, you take a mid position, and you attack. I don't mind the attack. If you defend, it will end up that they get level 13 eventually. For, like quite early. Oh, I don't like the 5 man engage here because you could have bad position on Immortal. You guys were ahead with the trade, and now you will have bad position. Did you just vault in? I think you did. That's risky. Okay, you guys come to attack. A bit split. Nice Diablo peel. Horrify is pretty good. Sanct was pretty good. No wind. Run. Disengage. You guys need to heal up. You have a lot of immortal advantage. Immortal HP advantage. Pretty well handled. Nicely, uh, nicely pulled back and defended. You see that they're all defending. Uh, the lanes are neutral. You guys are kind of hurt, and you're funneling in through a, a narrow choke. At this point, you know many of them use heroics, so did you. They're all defending. Uh, they didn't send anyone yet. Basically, at this point, the best thing you can do... First of all, you guys need more healing. So you can just wait, but don't keep taking Gul'dan spells. And after that, you can just flank. Come from, like, four different sides. Another thing you can do is to send Brightwing to the lane, since she has um, Z. Because you need some XP to get 13. But as soon as you see your Immortal ticking down, I want you guys to move in. Uh, because you know it's 5v4. But the main problem is this. The Accordion Syndrome. Constantly taking poke from Gul'dan. 
Always forward and back, like... There is no reason to do it. You either go in or you don't. I like the Diablo attempt. This is such a bad place to fight. So just split. Even if you're support and so on. First of all, if you guys didn't do this all the time, uh, just stay here. Just stay. Use vision, see their position. Or, as the five of you, come like this. <laughs> huh? The cool thing about coming from the left, if you circled around, is two things. One, you can solo gray main as five. They're split. Secondly, you push them into your base and you push them into your immortal. Huh? Oh, no, no, no. This is their immortal. But yeah, mainly when you're here, you either have the four of them split off or gray main split off. And furthermore, you have a lot more space like this, like this, like this to engage. This is the worst place to defend from, which is ironic because yeah. it's the most logical one since it's close to your base. So, poor positioning choice. But understandable. Everyone defense. I, again, I'd like to see Brightwing clear this for XP, but this is safer, I guess. So you have Emerald Wind available. Finally, that Molten Core value. Funny how far they ran from that. Okay. Cursed Bullet Horrify was great. So, uh... Brightwing is never allowed to be hit by Horrify, which means standing a bit away from the clump, so she can cleanse it away. You also saw Tyrio was bot, so ideally you can engage, but their, their alt combos was too good. Oh my god! Speaking of alt combos, nicely done, Muko. Now, you killed two, you lost one, and Diablo's coming back, but you were a little hurt. Mm, this is actually looking super good. Yeah, I like how aggressive you are here. Very nice, very nice. Cool, awesome, well done. Very aggressive, you vault forwards. Okay, at this point, there's two things you guys need, need to do. You need to min-max as much as you can. So that means grabbing this lovely bottom wave and the next, which is loads of XP. And since you're 5 versus 1, you must take down the entire fort. And after that, you will take top impalers. Then you'll get your bruisers and you get bottom impalers. That's the only correct play right now. You get the fort, but you miss out massively on bot XP. Which is not needed, because 5v3 is safe, 5v1 is safe, 4v3 is safe. Red team has destroyed a fort. You get the impalers. You get most of the XP, but not enough. You get the bruiser. And again, uh, Brightwing, as your global, should not just be played together with the team all the time. Brightwing should have stayed here. Kill the wall. Uh, soak XP. But if you see anyone, just stand here. You must grab advantage of that trait of hers. Her, that uh, mount of hers. They continue to outlane you. Even though you have the global, they do not. And they clear your bruiser for free. Whereas instead, Brightwing should be here to soak. And when you see that they're splitting like this, which you can because you have Tassadar Oracle, engage on these truckers. You and all your servants in hell will cower before me. I'm gonna play it a little bit faster because I wanna go to the broad macro strokes. And the replay is still a little bit longer. So I'm just going to play it a little bit faster. You fight on your own Immortal, which is actually quite fine. I don't want to look at the micro anymore because it'll take too long. Fighting on your own Immortal was fine. Uh, cleanse cool. Uh, I don't. I don't know if cleanse was used. Mm. Yeah, cleanse never gets used. Really, Brightwing needs to stay out of that. Um, horrify and cleanse someone. 
and if she can't cleanse well enough she needs to practice it and if she still can't then just take another talent really just take the healing nice sulfurous smash another defense on your own immortal which normally doesn't make sense for them to attack into but since they do attack into it you guys get the fight which is lovely massive wave top and bot but you also have a 5v4 so you would want to go for the immortal on the other hand you're all hurt so it's better to actually clear the two waves first i think you're too hurt you can lose a 5v4 here Very freaking nice. You're all alive. You're using the bright wing heals. You're min maxing like a boss. Extremely well done. Very impressive. And because you executed it that way, it ends up being the correct choice over soaking the minions. Because there would have been a chance you never get the immortal. Very nicely done. Okay. Question. Should Brightwing be solo to soak top, yes or no? I would say no. Uh, so what you'll generally see is that the attacking team does a hard engage on someone in order to buy more time for the immortal. Uh, and what you'll see the defending team do is to do a hard engage on the attacking team to make sure that they can kill the team and then kill the immortal. That would be true if the immortal was still pretty healthy. But I would say I rewind 5 or 10 seconds and that would be relevant. It's kind of ironic, but generally a really good first engage can be a great boon to making use of the immortal. And the same for the defender. A good engage can defend the immortal, whereas a bad engage is disastrous. You've got Apocalypse, and I'd just like to see you combo someone. For example, Tyrael. Force out Heroics early. Just Apocalypse him, Focus Fire him with Sulfur Smash and everything. They don't have Cleanse. Force out Aegis, Force out Sanct. But this is also safe. You get some keep damage and you go back. Make sure to go back though, because there's nothing left to gain now. So they use Army, they have the movement speed, you panic. In this case, it should be very clear to be like Emerald Wind only. Yeah. Does she not have cleanse? Bro! Don't walk away from Rag! Cleanse him! You meanie! Okay, so uh, it needs to be very clear. Before you even fight, you need to know if you go back don't fight uh if you don't want to fight only emerald wind because you used apocalypse sulfurus and it wasn't any good uh and then also keep in mind you have molten core which could be really nice in, in those situations you guys are holding your own real well huh? against a somewhat higher league team and in general Grayman is dead, you use vision, you see four of them, Rag is still coming in. Ideally, you show up, you poke a bit. When you poke them a bit, you will say, I force you to give it to me for free. But you don't go in hard enough to make it a 4v4 or a 3v4. If they stay, then you just go back again, let them take it, and then engage with Rag. So, poke, poke Arthas a bit. Oh, no, they have holy ground. Don't poke. And don't worry about the camp. Clear the wave and then engage like this. If you go to the camp, you have two problems. One, minion wave will dismount and hurt you from below and they get vision. Two, they can holy ground you out of here. If you come from this side, you have a better angle. And they're gonna get that camp anyway. So you guys could have cleared the minion wave a while ago and then you could have cut them off here before Greyman comes back, you see? You see the the why now. But either way, you didn't need that fight, but you did you didn't need to clear this immediately. 
Let your camp beat their camp, please. Pressure the keep. You guys need level 20. But because the immortal spawned like this, immediately kill the immortal. You got new information, now kill this. And they're even wasting time on their bruiser. But please keep Brightwing there for a while. Nice trade on the immortal. Hungering arrow build does a lot. Vision is good by Tassadar. And you've got defensive position. So immediately send Brightwing top, send Ragnar as a bot. If they hard engage, come back. If they don't, you get your level 20 and your deep push. Rack goes bot. Brightwing does not go top. Now you guys need to kick this Brightwing and get another. I want to try out for you. I'll cleanse. Just kidding. Just kidding. Rack clears bot somewhat, but he comes back because there's a hard engage. That's the correct uh, move. They do a lot of damage. You're again in this very awkward funnel where corruption just gets massive, massive value, which is not okay. So, again, uh, same thing as before, right? Come from another side. You guys still dominate them somehow. Sorry to skip your glory moment. Well done. It's all Marco 93, all Brightwing. You kill another immortal. Very well done. You get your level 20, and so do they. And there's two dead. So you must hard engage. Hellgate! Q! E! Go Diablo! Go, 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 go! Okay. Alright. How to get the most value out of your immortal is start a fight and kill as many as you can and even if you die. And then if there's no one left, their core will die. How to not play this is to wait and poke. And of course, Brightwing may not get uh, fortified. You get the keep. That's fine. Only Diablo died. He loses his souls. You get a camp. Actually, you guys could have also attacked bottom keep instead. I think that might have been even the better play. Because when I think about it, Horrify is always going to be scary, right? You guys going for it now. Nice. Okay. Vision. We need vision. We need side storms here. We need vision. And remember, if shit hits the fan, Emerald Wind, Molten Core. No! I mean, Horrify is just extremely OP. I don't know what else to say. You can't win a fight. I mean, Horrify is just a game-winning fight. A game-winning uh, heroic. So, Immortal, full shields. If two dead, I think you lost. I think I would even try to just go their core or something. Nothing else to say, like, Brightwing must cleanse someone and don't get horrified. If anything bad happens, like, Horrified will win that fight. That's why, like... Yeah, I don't know. It's really hard. A few little improvements so that you could be a little bit more ahead. Let's BM saying GG first as winner. Anyway, well played, and hope you found it uh, useful. Wouldn't you say they had to all in at top with the Immortal instead of getting caught at level 20 versus 20? Uh, yeah. Uh, you mean... What do you mean? The attacking or the defending one? Should Tass have gone force wall that game? Mm. <coughs> I prefer it, but I don't think it's 
100% essential. Greetings, friend. Oh, Great with Bolt, Diablo. Clash. Should the should the our team ha have hard engaged at top keep? I think so. The main problem was enemy team always got to engage with Horrify before Diablo did Apocalypse engage. Diablo needs to be more aggressive and Brightwing needs to protect better. If you hard engaged at top, you would have got the uh, more than a keep, I think. Jubated. 